Okay, so I've established uh, with uh, what diagnostics I've done that my internal voltage regulator in the PCM has gone south. So I've done some research on the old interweb and I have not been able to give me find any I found some information but I've not found any information our problem is the keyed power source and I'm going to explain that this right here is an external voltage regulator this comes off of early model Dodges uh, after they went with electronic ignition um, 60 mid 60s I'm not gonna get into it this is the plug that it goes into if you see Right there, there's the two female ends. These little guys are the male ends. Now, what this does, this uh, takes the place of your internal uh, voltage regulator inside the PCM. Um, not necessarily being cheap, I'm probably eventually gonna get PCM, but I just want to, uh, <clears throat> I wanna experiment with this just because some guys can't afford it. I'm not saying that I'm rich, but I can, but I'm eventually probably just gonna go and, and, and get it. And this is a quick and cheap get me by. By any means, am I insulting anybody if they do this permanently? Hell no, who knows, I might do it permanently. But what I'm getting at <clears throat> is I've not found the answer that I'm looking for, which is the key power source. Let's see if I can get a clean shot in here. Okay, what I just showed you was the uh, external voltage regulator itself. Like I said, this is off of a, uh, pretty much any Dodge uh, after mid 60s with a V8 up until 19, not necessarily a V8, I'm sorry. Um, uh, V8s are irrelevant. Um, up until 87, I think, then that's when they, when they went with the internal. But what we've got here <clears throat> is uh, external regulator, and this is the plug uh, that I, I just showed. This little guy here. And it's got two wires coming off of it. All right, the top wire, and this is very important, the top wire, uh, you're gonna split it off and you're gonna run both of these to the field, to the back of your alternator. Now some of them, uh, and this will work uh, for the Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, I think all the way up. Um, I'm not sure about on the common rails. Uh, I haven't invested in that, or investigated that. We do have a common rail here. I just haven't got into it. We haven't, knock on wood, we haven't had any problems with it. Uh, anyways, I'll get back to, I'll quit rambling. On my 2001, there's two wires coming out of the back of the alternator. And they're field wires. And what those two do, the best of I can figure, is they go to your PCM and tell your PCM, your battery's a little low, go ahead and turn me on, the alternator, turn the alternator on and send it some charge to the batteries and keep them running. Well, when that goes south, your alternator sits and just doesn't charge. It's not told to charge, so it just sits there in Cadillacs. So by putting this in, what we're doing is we're going to, eliminate the PCM obviously and tell it to charge. With that being said, the two blue and green wires, they go to the two wires on the back of your alternator. And I don't think they matter if you switch them back and forth. But the problem is you have to have a keyed power source. Now you can't just run that power source um, hot directly to your battery. Now you can and it will charge, but you leave it on overnight and it'll drain your battery. So that's the point of a keyed power source. And if you can see in the diagram I've got right here, Okay, well therein lies the problem. Where in the hell do I find a keyed power source? Alright, well let me show you what I've got. <clears throat> Excuse the shop, it's a mess. So I'm fumbling around on my fuse panel inside the engine compartment and I'm trying to find uh, somewhere to hook in that's a keyed power source. Well, everything is hot. I mean, everything you touch, you know, obviously this is a to the starter. Make a liar out of me here. Stand by. This is complicated to do with one hand. All the sources are hot. Now I've got two little fuses here. If you look in the back of your panel, one says power outlet and one says spare. So I'm thinking, all right, winner, winner. I just scored, but their power with the key off. So it's like, well, crap. All right. So what I was going to do is put a toggle switch in. And uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine about it, and he about had a duck. Because I generally don't jerry-rig stuff. <clears throat> I kind of try to do it legitimate. So what we've come up with is I'm going to come into the back of the key switch. 
come from the source itself. Now if you look, the red wire, lighting is poor, I apologize, but that red wire shows up. You can see that the, the test light is lit up with the key off. Now this black and white wire, you can see it right there, black and white wire is on a key switch. So I've got that in and I'll turn the key on maybe with one hand and the light comes on. I turn it off and the light goes off. So that is a keyed switch. So what I'm going to do is pop this little guy out, hopefully without breaking these tangs off. It comes out. Now there's a little red, I've already been into this, y'all know I'm not going to film it without doing a little bit of experiment. There's a little red clip that slides in there. I'm not 100% sure what that does. I think what that does is it locks these little clips, all the little clips into place. Now, maybe I can get a view of this. Okay. A little clip. Now it doesn't just slide out that easy. I've already had it out, obviously. So what I'm going to do with that guy there, is I'm going to take one of these flat spade and I'm going to connect I'm going to connect uh, the, the positive wire that I want to run to the voltage regulator into here and neatly run it down through the firewall and all around. Now you say, well that's not got a yellow thing on it. Well, I simply take the yellow things off, like so. There's that. Discard that guy. You have that. The reason I do that <clears throat> is the way I get heat shrink in there and I generally put a little bit of dialithic grease in there and the heat shrink it all together. It keeps any moisture out. We live on the coast, so it is, uh, it's a nightmare. All right, now that's, that's part of that showing you there. Now I'm not gonna show you me hooking the wires and stuff all up and all that. I've only got one hand. So I'm gonna do this, hook it in, and get a power source run to my voltage regulator. And then from there, I'll explain what I'm doing. Okay, here I've got the uh, voltage regulator mounted to the firewall. One thing I forgot to mention during uh, the initial explanation is this wire here. This is your ground wire. Basically, you just incorporate it in one of the three mounting holes and you make sure you have a happy ground. So apparently, it is crucial to ground this. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and ground it right. Some of the some of the guys are saying what they've done, and mind you, this was the 12 valves. They're mounting them on some of the smaller little bolts here. And to be honest with you, I think I'm probably gonna try that. I think that's just a case bolt that holds the alternator together. Looks to be about a 10 millimeter. I'm gonna just gonna unscrew that little guy and run a you know round clip on there and screw it in. Initial thought I was going to uh, ground it to here, but uh, I think I decided against that mid mid thought while I was talking to y'all. Anyways, um, that is crucial. Before you plug any of the unit into anything, you have that grounded. Uh, apparently, if you don't, it automatically fries it. <clears throat> and then I'm going to run my other two wires over, and then connect them in to both the field lines. Now I'm not 100% sure if that's going to work uh, and keep my um, check engine light off uh, and I'll know right away if this is charging or not um, and I guess you'll see with me if I win or if I fail uh, but I'll film it either way and then if I screw up I guess I'll see if I can figure out what I did wrong hopefully it's a win though anyways <clears throat> got the two wires in uh, I've got them you know plugged in set where I want them to go I got my uh, pigtail running and I'm gonna tie all that in real neat up along with the original clean it up make it look original do the same thing with these. And damned if I didn't run out of green and blue wire. I thought I had some and I just didn't have enough. So what I went ahead and did is run my red, which is my power source wire anyways, and then a black. 
uh, then we're all going to go into a loom. Oh yeah, and be very careful. If you do something dumb like that and do two blacks, make sure you mark one of them, which I did. I marked the end so I know which one's which, uh, but it's best to color code. But I, I just ran, I just didn't have enough wire. I looked in the box and I didn't have it. So it is what it is. Anyways, that's a little update. Uh, once I get everything buttoned up and tied in, I'll uh, I'll take another video and hopefully we'll start it and it'll charge. Okay, I'm fixing to hook up the wires from the voltage regulator to the back of the alternator. Now, if you have a uh, 12, 24 valve, uh, this is probably going to be your alternator, the, the, the uh, plug-in in the back of the alternator. It's just a simple plug-in, plugs right in. Well, you got to cut those wires and splice. I'll show you that here in a second. But this is, this is crucial right here. Um, I've heard that it, well, I don't know if it's crucial. I've heard that it doesn't matter if you switch these wires back and forth, but if it didn't matter, why would somebody take the time to do this? Um, so I imagine this is from the manufacturer, but you can see what it is. It's pretty cut and dry. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do. What I've done is I've cut and spliced the wires, got butt connectors on them, and this, these are going to be my coming from my voltage regulator, which is I've gotten this loom right here. I've got my wires coming out, and I'm going to tie them in. I'm going to take, um, which it said field number two, which if you're looking at it from the back side, it's going to be on this side. Field one is going to be on that side, if you're looking at it from this way. Well, regardless, that way, that way, it's kind of cut and dry. Either way, I'm going to take and it, it said on there the positive i'm going to put it on field number two which is this side right here and oh i'm sorry this side right here and uh we're gonna hook it up uh these are my last two wires to hook up um tighten my battery terminals back down and we're gonna give it a shot i'll, I'll button everything up with the wire looms a little bit more uh, and i'll show you i've got this uh connected i didn't actually show before I tied it in, I kind of got carried away and forgot to film, but you don't know how much of a pain in the butt it is to film and do everything at the same time by yourself. But you can see the black wire, the red wire, the lighting is wonderful. They're tied into the back, back in there. Okay, quick shot. Got everything tied in. And I did not show you all this, but uh, see the ground on the alternator? I did do that. <clears throat> I forgot to mention it, but I did do that before I tied the other two wires in. Now, I'm assuming that there's not any voltage going through it right now because the key is in the off position. But I went ahead and did it anyway just to uh, cover my, uh, you know what, CYA. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, put the wire loom in and get everything buttoned back up. And then uh, I'm gonna get my air box in. I took the air, I didn't mention it, but I took the air box out to show y'all. But uh, I've got everything neatened up, or I'm gonna fix and neaten everything up, and um, fire it up. And uh, I'll have it, I'll have it filming while I fire it up. I'm gonna lose. Y'all get to see. Okay, I've got everything buttoned up. My wiring harness is in back there. Got the air box back in, ready to fire it up. <clears throat> now, if you can remember in the last last video I took of my of my uh, my dash, and you can see that's all it was reading. It's just normal battery, uh, you know, 12 volts, 12 and a half volts.
good. Get my voltmeter. I think it's working. I'll test drive it and I'll take y'all along for our test drive. <laughs> 